In season one of A Discovery of Witches, um, we meet Diana Bishop and she is an academic. She's studying at Oxford. One day she's on her way to, to teach a class and all of her papers from her bag fall out and she does something and they all zip back and we start to realise that this girl has powers. She's in the Bodleian Library one day and she takes out a certain book. There you go. Yeah, actual manuscripts. Thank you. Which we will come to know as the Book of Life. The Book of Life, which is all about the origins of the species. Whoever gets their hands on this book ultimately can control all the species in our world. So that covers demons, witches and vampires. This book has been, it turns out, missing for an incredibly long time. And it's a book he's been looking for and he wants it. Where's the manuscript now? Where it always is. You can't take books out of the Bodleian. She ends up meeting um, Matthew de Clermont, who is a vampire. At the beginning, and immediately when they meet, there is a fuisson of attraction. Yours, I believe. As the series goes on, um, they become closer and closer and ultimately form this incredible bond with one another. You can hear my heart. Yes. Their relationship comes with a lot of complications. The congregation are very unhappy with us. The congregation set down a bunch of rules about how all creatures should live their lives and that they certainly should never mix. A vampire cannot fall in love with a witch, and in our situation we do. So we have a lot of people coming after us. We end season one uh, with Knox, Gerber and Satu coming to seize Matthew and Diana. Matthew and Diana uh, time step to Elizabeth in London. She will arrive this night. Our fierce witch. We find Matthew and Diana as they land into Elizabeth in London, 1590. Where are we? Not where I'd hoped. Diana being a historian, this is her biggest dream. This is everything she knows and what she's studied. And so for her, it's just absolutely Fascinating. All the same pods. It's huge. In season two, it's a very interesting dynamic for Matthew and Diana. What Diana is expecting is to be navigating this world with the Matthew she knows. Why do you do it? And that is not the Matthew she gets. Because it is my duty. When Matthew goes back in time, he has to re-inhabit the old Matthew Royden. My father needed a spy in the English court. I fulfilled that need and I did it very well. He has to go back to being the witch killer that he used to be. It really affects Matthew having to step back into his, into his footsteps. Matthew Royden at that time was Lord Burley's right-hand man. He was basically like 007 for the Queen. And he did all of the sort of dirty work and the torturing and everything else. He has these deep and dark secrets that slowly evolve throughout the series. And that puts massive challenges upon the relationship. Diana finds herself in a very tricky position because she's travelled back in time, but she has absolutely no friends whatsoever. The only person she has is Matthew. It's quite an isolation for her. She has to start from scratch meeting people and, and finding her way in a land that she only has read about. It comes with its challenges. Diana. Lord Henry Percy, Earl of Northumberland, and Sir Walter Raleigh. When the School of Night first come round and meet Diana, um, there's quite a bit of tension. It's an honour to meet you. I don't recognise your accent. There's big issues about whether Diana can actually go out and walk on the streets because she is so different. If it's discretion you want, I'd keep that indoors. In a society that was not, that's very patriarchal, she's not allowed to stand out. The historical characters that appear uh, in A Discovery of Witches uh, ultimately exist within the novel itself. It's something which we felt it was important to bring through from the novel. Just that extra layer of history, it gives it a great historical context, it gives it great import. If you can imagine the buzz that Diana gets from talking to Matthew about these people like Darwin or whatever, you met them, oh my goodness. Now we as an audience member get to meet Walter Raleigh. My character is Christopher Marlowe in our story is referred to often as Kit, the playwright, Shakespeare's contemporary. He's good friends with Matthew. He is part of the School of Night with Matthew Royden and Walter Raleigh. He's Matthew's greatest, closest friend. Listen to me, Kit. If you were ever my friend, be my friend now. Accept us. My character in this season is Andrew Hubbard. He's based on a real person, as lots of the characters are in, this, in the books. He is related to Matthew. He looks after the waifs and strays, the children of London. I accept your gift. 
and vowed to protect you as my child. He really cares for them and protects them against the, the forces of the sovereign, the queen, and, um, and her spies. It's about them existing in the 1590s and the challenges that they have to face. You start to see uh, Diana's character really become strong, uh, not only with magic. She has to, to step up a little bit also to help look after Matthew mentally because he starts to lose himself. She really comes to the forefront. The journey that Matthew and Diana go on is pretty exciting for an audience. And then hopefully with that, you get the tapestry of all these other complex characters as well with the added bonus that they're historical figures. I love reliving this world and being with Diana again and, and seeing how her dynamic with Matthew has shifted. So it's been such a joy working on season two so far.